Alright guys, so you know how I feel about Black & Decker tools. Typically, they're trash. Almost all of them are trash. There's been a couple that have been good, but for the most part they produce garbage. So, today we're going to be testing the Black & Decker Matrix Kit. Not only is Black & Decker usually trash, usually stuff like this that is like one tool that tries to be a bunch of tools, usually those also end up being trash. So. What I suspect, the, this entire kit is just gonna be complete garbage, is what my expectation is. All in one type kit. So what you get is a 20 volt drill. That's just a regular drill, one and a half amp, one and a half amp hour battery. And then from this, you get all these other tools. And this kit, you push this button down on top, and then each piece pops off. So you get a drill attachment, you get an impact attachment, and then you get a, I forget what this is, I forget what this is called, but it's one of those like oscillating blade tools. You get a router, so you have kind of like a, kind of like a hand router, a hand sander, and then you have a jigsaw attachment so that you can cut things so it's kind of like a i mean for the average person kind of like an everything you would need all in one type kit so if this stuff just works i think it's going to be kind of a win just because the block and decker stuff is usually so bad we're going to test out some of this stuff and uh see how good it is so first might as well just start off with the drill all right guys so before we go any farther this video is sponsored by manscaped Manscaped has sent me their performance package 4.0. So let's see what's inside. So first and foremost, you get the lawnmower 4.0. This is a completely wireless trimmer. It's waterproof. It has skin safe technology. It also has a little light. So it has that skin safe technology where you're not gonna cut and nick yourself. That's very nice. It comes with a wireless charger that is also a stand. So you can just put it on your sink. It comes with two different guards so that you can trim at two different lengths. It also comes with a bottle of ball deodorant and a bottle of ball toner, two things that are very nice. And if we just look under here, you get a, oh, you get a free toiletry bag. And then now the focus of this, so now the star of the show, you get a pair of these anti-chafing boxer briefs, which they just released uh, new designs of these, and now instead of just the black, you can get up to six different pairs. And you can, if you just want these by themselves, you can buy just one pair, or you can go all the way up to a three pack. So you can just pick three you like, get them all at once. So that's very nice. So if you are interested in any of this stuff or some of the other things that I think are essential, they also have a cologne that smells amazing. And they also have a uh, nose and ear hair trimmer. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, you can click the link in the top of the description and you can use code TUBE and you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. So first things first, we're just gonna take it super easy. We gotta remember it's a Black & Decker. We don't wanna overwork it. We don't wanna kill it just yet. And I did not mention at the beginning, but if you can see those sparks inside of here. That means that the drill is brushed, so it's not the new brushless technology. So that's going to limit limit us in some ways. So let's just start off real easy, just a couple of real tiny screws. Okay, as expected, nice and easy. Let's go up for something a little bit bigger. Kind of a smaller wood screw. Still worked, but it almost felt like it was struggling. It's gonna take another step up. All right, you got my attention. Our last one here. Now it did that, but if you, if you were an astute viewer, you will notice that whenever I was putting that in, as soon as I got like, got like halfway there, you could, you could hear the motor start to struggle a little bit. So that's not a good sign. I believe these are three and a half inches or something. Yeah, these are three and a half inch wood screws. So that, I mean, three and a half inch wood screw, pretty significant, but if it's bogging, if it's starting to bog down a little bit just on that, we might be in trouble. So the drill attachment for it, uh, it's average, nothing really special. 
So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. I have to admit, this like hot swap quick system or whatever the, whatever they call this, I do like this. And I would like to see this in like bigger brands because I, I think it's really cool. So we're just gonna swap out the drill for the impact. We have three different sizes of lag bolts. We're gonna see if we can get all three of these in there. Okay, it got it in there, but it didn't seem like it was very happy about it. A lot of that is probably due to the fact that it's not brushless. See if we can get this one in here. Again, it got the job done, but it was not happy about it. Now, if I had to guess, I would say that it's probably not gonna be able to get this one in there. I've been wrong before. Okay, I, I was wrong and it, I'm impressed with that because that's, that's the biggest one that I have and I did not think that it was going to be able to get that in. Now one thing, one thing that there is uh, to mention, like, it's not hot, but it smells like grease really bad. I don't know if it's just like the drill or if it's the, like the head. I think it's this head it has a, an extremely strong grease smell. Let's go ahead and take them out, make sure it has enough. Make sure it has the same amount of reverse torque as it does forward torque. I'm impressed with that. I really am. Take that one out and put one over here. So the impact is <laughs> the, the impact attachment is very torquey and it does work very well. So I think this is hot, is what that is. I think that's a quarter inch quarter inch shank, or it might be a three eighths. <sighs> I always manage to burn myself in every single one of these videos. Let's move on to the next attachment. So our next tool, and the one that I don't remember the name to, it's just some type of oscillating tool. So this blade, this, these are the blades it uses, and these blades just kind of like shake back and forth until it cuts through wood or metal, apparently. Like a, some type of like quick connect system where you can kind of put it on here and it like locks in and you can put it, so you can cut something, you can cut something this way, or you can kind of just turn this thing if you need to get like say 90 degrees and cut something. As far as I know, you can only use the quick connect system with the Black & Decker blades. Because I bought some other blades that are higher quality, but they don't lock in to this, they don't lock into this thing. But the kit comes with like a, I don't even know what you call it, just like a little screw, so that you can use other blades, but they don't have the, like the, the holes that lock in. So I don't know if that's gonna affect anything or not. But it says it cuts wood metal. Uh, wood is obviously easy. We can cut wood like real fast. <laughs> I mean, we can see that it cuts wood, wood soft. So, um, I have different nails, or I have two different nails, a few different screws, and I have some bigger stuff, and I wanna see just what size of things it can cut through. So we'll start off with the little tiny nail. I'm gonna try to cut it off uh, as flush as possible. That was quick. That was a lot quicker than I expected. And it doesn't even look like the blade is damaged. Okay, that was not as quick. It made it through. I know you can't really see it, but the blade uh, does not look damaged at all. Hmm, okay, now the blade is damaged. I don't know if you're supposed to go like, 
Full speed or what? Okay, they cut it, but the blade is getting more and more damaged. <laughs> Okay, that is just not... That is just not cutting at all. So I think whatever this is made of, I think this might be our limit. So what we'll do is I have some Diablo blades that are supposed to be carbide teeth, extreme this, that, and the other, cut everything. And then I got the little kit that's supposed to hook onto the front of this. I'll take that off. That blade is... Probably junk because it's the one that comes with it. So it's about what I expect. So you can put this on like this, and then you can tighten this up, and then away you go. So we should be good. Now let's see if we can cut through this. Much easier. Although the teeth on the blade are completely gone. So this is the teeth on the blade. You can see, obviously, good teeth over here. Completely shredded from that one screw. So, I did not expect that. Uh, I guess that screw was made out of something really hard. It chewed right through all of our carbide teeth. So I'm gonna use the other side and take out this. Okay, so, so that just slipped off. So here's another thing. Now it's probably another good time to mention. I don't know 100% that this is supposed to work this way. I don't know that you're supposed to just slide this in here and like hope for the best. Actually, you know what I just thought of? I think I'm an idiot. Uh, never mind. So like I said, I don't know for sure that this is the way this is supposed to work. It seems like this would be like setting you up for for it to fail like it just did because there's nothing grabbing a hold of this blade other than just friction. But in the manual, it pretty much says to do this. Actually, it says that this is the accessory adapter kit and it shows a picture of like a blade and it being tightened down. Let's try again. It got, got loose and then tightened itself up again. Yeah. I feel like what's happening here is that the tool is not bad. I feel like these blades just aren't made for this specific tool. So after some further research, it turns out that Black & Decker, for this oscillating tool at least, they use a proprietary connection. So that means you can't just go to any hardware store and get a Diablo or a Milwaukee or a DeWalt oscillating tool blade and you can't interchange them like you can with every other brand you gotta get the black and decker brand of blades or i think i saw like one brand uh on the internet that i've never heard of but they their blades fit all of them plus black and decker so that really limits your options so that really limits your options i would imagine in style of blade and obviously the quality because the black and decker blade is obviously not that good of quality. I really hate that because it, it, what, it, what it reminds me of is this. And I'm sure you guys all remember this monstrosity when I did this video. This uses a proprietary connection for the blade and you have to use Black & Decker blades or I think there's one other brand that makes this style blade or something. But that's what that's what it reminds me of. I don't, I, I don't understand why they would do that because it severely limits like what you can do with the tool. I don't know. So for this oscillating tool, the tool itself, or this attachment itself, I think it's fine. It did, like it, it wasn't getting bogged down. The only, there was nothing, it wasn't, it was doing everything it was supposed to do. The failure point was the blades. As far as the tool itself, I think it's fine. Now, as far as what you can do with the tool because of the limitation of the blades, I don't know. 
So next tool on the list <clears throat> is the router. Now, full transparency, I've never used a router before. Just a couple days ago, learned like what you can do with one. If it, if it doesn't turn out that great, it's probably just because I'm completely inexperienced. So I have a straight bit on the router and I'm just gonna try to like, I guess just make like a little channel or something. And we'll just, we'll just see if it works. You gotta push this button before you can turn it on. That's uh, very crooked. I have a feeling that I probably went about that the complete wrong way, if I had to guess. I mean, it did make a little channel in there, kind of like I wanted. It said something in the manual about like only going a certain direction or something. But like, if you were gonna do a straight, like a straight uh, cut or something, I don't know exactly how you would do that. Let's try maybe like just, just like going along the edge or something. It really just like digs in. Something tells me my technique is way off. All right, fine. Let's just see if we can just go straight through again. How about that? Excuse me? Table's trying to fall off. This generates a lot of force. That time I was able to keep it straight. I mean, if I had something to keep the table still, or if I had a steady workbench like I need. As far as as far as that goes, I feel like that is pretty good. Or at least that's as good as I'm gonna be able to do. Somebody who is very experienced with a router, I'm sure could probably make this thing work like a breeze. But let's try uh, let's try some of the other some of the other bits that I have. So I switched out the bit, and it's it is this is a decorative bit now. And it's called the Roman Ogie. Essentially just like two little, like two little hunks. Come on, don't do that. Okay. I also have a feeling that you're probably if you're using a, a tool like this, like a router, for something like a, a with a decorative bit, I'm also assuming that you're probably not going to be using it on a 2x4. So that's probably why we were getting like these chips and stuff. I'd assume you're going to be using it on something higher quality. I, mean, I don't know how much you can see on camera. But that's pretty nice. Like that feels and looks exactly like, exactly like it does in the picture. Yeah, that was actually, it's so smooth. It's almost like it was sanded or something. That is pretty crazy. If somebody like me, who's never used a router until today, get something that is halfway decent, I'm sure an experienced router user could make anything happen with it. And it's doesn't seem to have any power issues. Uh, seems to have plenty of power. I figured that this drill was going to be severely underpowered and cause a lot of problems. So far, that doesn't seem to be the case. So I guess we're going to move on to our next tool. So next attachment that we have is the sanding attachment. Now it comes with uh, several different grits of sandpaper. I put 60 grit on here, so it's pretty rough. Let's just see if we can maybe sand this two by four to the point where this ink is no longer here. I think that'll be a pretty good test. I think this board is so uneven. If you look at the center of this, I don't think the center of this touched at all. I think it was just this and the heel. But that, I mean, that's sanded. That's smooth. That is very smooth. Let's put a finer grit on there. Go from 60 to 240. But 
we don't follow the rules anyway, so what's the matter? That is crazy. And just that small little amount of time, that is so smooth. That's like as smooth as this cut was. You can feel it over, well, you can't feel it. I can feel it. Over here, it's very rough. Super smooth. I'm impressed. I don't know if all sanders work that good, but this one definitely does. So now we've switched out to the jigsaw attachment and I have a Diablo fast woodcutting blade. It's got very aggressive teeth in there. So I'm hoping that I can kind of move fast and really put it under a load. See if maybe we can bog this thing out or maybe it'll just power through it. That does not seem to be, not seem to be going all that well. What a slow cut. Jeez. That felt like that was a lot more work than it should have been. I mean, maybe you're not supposed to use a jigsaw to cut a two by four. I mean, that was, that's pretty rough. All right, so I switched out the uh, wood blade for a metal cutting blade. And I have a piece of flat stock that is, it's an eighth inch thick by three quarter inch wide. So, see if we can cut through it. All right, the clamps and the workbench and everything just... It's cutting it fast. It's just this whole table setup I have sucks. Clearly, I mean, that worked, but all but that last little tiny bit. Clearly this table is not going to allow it to actually perform like it should. So here's my final thoughts on this thing. And I didn't tell you the price on purpose. So I wanted to show you how everything performed. And then I'm gonna tell you the price. For the whole kit, everything, $187 on Amazon right now. So with, all, with that being said, some of these things weren't great, like the uh, jigsaw's not the best. The drill, I think, could be a little bit better. The oscillating tool has the, the, has the pitfalls with the blades where you gotta have the special blades and whatever. Overall, I think for $187, especially if you just need a drill, you just sometimes need a drill. Maybe sometimes you just need an impact. Sometimes you need a router. Like you don't, you're not using all of these tools all of the time and you could really benefit from having just one kit that has everything that you just use each one just a little bit. I think it's a good deal. And I actually, as much as I want to hate it just because it's a Black & Decker and I'm not a fan of Black & Decker, I think it's good and I think it's worth the money. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.